This video assumes that you already know how to use your sequencer, specifically how it instantiates plugins, how it routes audio and MIDI data, and how it performs real-time track bounces. This video also assumes that you've connected Receptor to your computer or computer network using Ethernet and configured that network properly. If not, please see the Receptor networking videos to learn how this is done. First, make sure Uniwire is enabled on your Receptor. On its front panel, press the Setup button and rotate the top display knob until the Uniwire parameter is displayed. If the parameter is currently disabled, then rotate the bottom display knob to enable it. Open a new Cubase file, go to the Devices menu, and choose VST Instruments. Then instantiate a Uniwire instrument plugin by selecting it from the Muse menu. When the Uniwire plugin appears, make sure that it's communicating with the correct receptor. If you have only one receptor, it will automatically communicate with it. If you have multiple receptors, select the desired one from this list. Set the desired latency. By default, the smallest value is 2 times Cubase's buffer size. Now since I currently have Cubase set to a buffer size of 192, the smallest possible Uniwire latency setting is 384 samples. Next, use the multi-bank and multi-patch menus to select the desired patch. Here, we've selected Roaring Organ. From Cubase's project menu, select Add Track and select MIDI from the submenu. Open Cubase's inspector and in the MIDI Tracks In menu, select your MIDI controller keyboard and from the Out menu, select the Uniwire instrument plugin that you just instantiated. Now, when you play your MIDI keyboard, the MIDI data will transmit over Uniwire to a receptor where it will play the selected patch and send the audio back into Cubase over Uniwire. Open the Uniwire plugin's edit window and audition different patches. When you find a patch you like, record it in Cubase by clicking the record button and playing. You can now play back that loop. If you want to bounce this track to disk, simply select it and then go to the File menu and select Export and then Audio Mix Down. In the resulting dialog, click the Real-Time Export option as this is the only way to bounce Uniwire tracks since the processing is not occurring natively. Make sure the correct outputs are being recorded and if you want the bounce track to appear in your sequence, click the Audio Track and Pool options. Name the file and then save it. If you double click the new audio file, you'll see that indeed, the Uniwired track has been bounced to Cubase. You can mute the original MIDI track and sure enough, you'll hear just the bounced audio track. You can also use Receptor as an external effects processor over Uniwire. For this example, delete your original MIDI track so your sequence has only the audio track that you've just recorded. Open the mixer and for that audio track, open its channel settings window. Click in the first insert slot and select Uniwire Effects from the Muse folder. For this example, you'll target a specific receptor channel. Specifically, you'll send the data to Receptor Channel 1 for processing. You can do this by clicking directly on Receptor Channel 1 in the Miniature Receptor graphic. Since you want to configure an effects chain in Receptor, you'll need to open its edit window. So click the Launch Receptor Remote button to do so. Control click on the multi-patch to load a blank configuration. Then in Receptor Channel 1, click the Source Selector and choose Uniwire as the audio sound source. 
it might be helpful to start playing the audio file in Cubase so you can hear what's happening. Right now, you're hearing your track running through Receptor and it's completely unaffected since you haven't assigned any effects yet. Click the FXA plugin selector and choose Classic Phaser. Then load a patch such as Old Radio. Next, click the FXB plugin selector and choose MDA Leslie. Then load the patch called Fast. You can bypass either or both of these effects to hear the effect that they have on the sound. Save this patch as a single patch by clicking the Save File button in the single slot. Choose a bank to save it in, and then a location. Name it, click OK, and then Close. Go back to the Uniwire plugin in Cubase and click the Update Bank Patch List button. Your newly created single patch appears in the single patch list and you can select it here. You can hear different effects by selecting different patches in this window. When you save your sequence, it will automatically recall this patch whenever you reopen the sequence, so there's no more messing about with MIDI bank select and program change messages when you use Uniwire. If you like, you can bounce this process track to disk using the same method discussed previously. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. Obviously, you can have multiple Uniwire instrument tracks and multiple Uniwire effects tracks. You can target each track to a specific channel or to a specific plugin within each Uniwire instantiation, and you can bounce the whole thing down to your sequencer, all without detriment to your host computer's CPU, without altering your plugin based workflow, and without any audio or MIDI cables. There is a wealth of pertinent information in the Uniwire training videos and even more in your Uniwire documentation. So spend a little time with these informational sources, and you'll soon be reaping the rewards of a Uniwire based studio.